Welcome to our white towel videos. Uh, Paul Chapman joined with Ed Willis here. Ed, I wanted to talk a little bit on the series we're doing looking at the Canucks at yeah. 50. And it was pretty slim pickings trying to find the top 10 <laughs> moments of the 1970s. They got off to a bit of a rough start. But it is fascinating looking at yeah. some of the stuff through the history of this team. And one of the things that people maybe don't realize is uh, when the Griffiths bought the team about halfway through the decade, they had the broadcasting empire as well. But Jim Pattison yes. owned the WHA Vancouver Blazers, and there was a great divide in town about yeah. which hockey team was a bigger deal. Well, no, and you have to remember how bad the Canucks were for their first, like, three, four years. So a couple of things happened there. So Jimmy swoops in, buys the Philadelphia Blazers, who are famous, of course, because they are the predecessor of the Miami Screaming Eagles. You're going to get a WHA history lesson here. You're talking to the <laughs> wrong man, my friend. They go to Philadelphia. Philadelphia is the team that signs Derek Sanderson, who plays all of eight games for them. They sign Bernie Perrant. But anyways, Jimmy buys the team and actually pays a pretty big big buck for them, considering you could have got a franchise for a song, uh, and moves them to Vancouver. And his intent is really to take the Canucks out. He thinks there's a weakness there. You have to remember where the WHA is at the time. They've got Bobby Hull. They've just signed Gordie Howe. They've got, you know, other players there that makes them think, you know, maybe they can be competitive. So Jimmy moves in, buys the team, uh, doesn't really spend the big money the first year, but the next year he spends, for what, what was at the time, huge dollars on a kid named Pat Price, who's Saskatoon Blades, who was considered the best junior defenseman in the country, and Ron Chipperfield from, from Brandon. And these are going to be the stars they build this new team around. Didn't quite work out that way, but uh, as I worked through this, there's a couple of things. I thought I knew all the WHA stories, but, but Jimmy made a huge play for Phil Esposito. Uh, just before he sells the team to, uh, to, to Calgary, or moves the team to Calgary, excuse me. And just, no, no, talk about what ifs. Just think, roll that one around in your brain because it's shortly before Boston trades uh, Espo to, uh, to, to the Rangers and then the famous Brad Park deal. Uh, and apparently it was really close, and, and uh, it was, I'm trying to remember the exact number, it was a million up front, and I think it was uh, it was four years times 600, which again, now it's, that's what you pay a penalty killer. It was huge coin uh, back then. So it, it, again, it's kind of this underwritten uh, uh, part of, uh, of Vancouver hockey history, but it was a real thing back in the mid-70s. Yeah, absolutely. It's It has been like, like a history lesson for me to go through the files. Yeah. You know, in particular, the very first time they made the playoffs, uh, they played the Montreal Canadiens. They lost four games to one, and that was right in the middle yeah. of this powerhouse Canadiens team. But one of the great things is just reading the quotes from the players. The Canucks at that point were no wins, 24 losses, and three ties against the Canadians. And they asked Phil Maloney before the playoff yeah. series, how are you going to beat the Montreal Canadians? And he said, how the hell do I know? I've never done it. Can you imagine getting a quote okay, like so that that's, today? You know, but that's the other thing that comes up in this. You know, the, the Canucks have been uniformly terrible for the first. Gary Smith has one of the most underappreciated seasons in Canucks history in 74-75. Puts the team on his back, takes him to the playoffs, and actually wins a playoff game in the form, which was unheard of at that time. So that kind of, you know, promoted the Canucks brand and it made the, the Blazers job uh, that, that, that much more difficult. I don't think it was ever going to work here. Uh, the, the, the NHL brand was just too strong. But it, it, again, it's kind of an interesting what if. Yeah, and you can follow these stories all year long when we get into, we'll get into the 80s, the, the illustrious 80s in December, and then on through the, the rest of the season, we'll go through the other decades. I did, however, raise an eyebrow when Serge Savard was asked about the prospect of playing the Canucks in that playoff series. And he channeled Drew Doughty in the future and he said, if we lose a game to that team, it is because we are being lazy and not working hard enough. So they used to offer up a lot of different quotes back then. Um, thanks for watching, everyone, and continue to read our stories all season long.